Right, it's still slightly damp, but I'm not bothered about that. I'm gonna mix up some very dark tone from French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. A little bit of alizarin crimson in there, keeps it warm and start applying the very darkest tones even while parts of it are, are still damp. And with this I'm painting in the cracks in the side of the rock face. And as you can see, because it's still damp, it's a little bit fuzzy, but that's, that's good for it. It keeps it unpredictable, it keeps it natural and random looking. Just soften that off. I'm just remodeling that slightly because it doesn't quite tie in with the sketch. This part of the rock face should be slightly lower than that one. So it's using the tones, it's using the darks against the lights to help define the details on the rocks. Let's just darken that there, soften it off. As always, I'm trying very hard not to create faces in the cliff face. Usually it happens without you realising it and somebody will point it out to you when it's hanging on a wall and you can do nothing about it. As before, it's important to keep part of the rock face back. So these, these parts here, I'm keeping the detail down to an absolute minimum in the hope that it'll do just that. softening it off there to give it a little bit of graduation. I'm nearly there. Of course there's always the question of when to stop and it's not always an easy question to answer. Dividing line between a painting being just right and being overworked can be painfully thin. Erring on the side of understatement is usually the best course of action, just to be sure. If in doubt, underwork it. Don't forget your foreground rocks.
put some interesting cracks in there, I think. Let's not forget the sheep. I've already left a sheep shaped highlight, so I just paint the head in. With the dark tone and just soften it off with clean water. So it bleeds into there like that one. Every so often then, live dangerously. Throw caution to the wind and approach a painting without any pre-planning whatsoever. Throw some colours onto the sky and see what they do. And whatever they do, live with it, work with it, alter the whole essence of the painting according to what that wash does. Live dangerously, try it. The idea of painting up purely from pencil sketches made on location. It can be quite daunting, particularly to the beginner. But I hope this has inspired you to think again about going into the great outdoors armed with just a sketchbook and a pencil. Just the act of sitting there and looking at your subject in situ means you will understand your subject just that little bit better and it will follow through to the final painting. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available to order from the Painting and Drawing Channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.